Watch out what you click on, otherwise you might get wasted by ransomware. more about the new Wasted Locker malware? Hey, Kim. Yes. Uh, I actually came across this uh, threat spotlight from Malwarebytes about Wasted Locker just a few days ago, and it was really interesting because we hear a lot about ransomware in general, uh, but there are a few differences with, I think, with this malware family or with this ransomware campaign uh, that kind of caught my eye. Um, the first thing is that it seems to be that if you were infected with this wasted locker ransomware, um, the, the ransom might be really, really high. So apparently uh, the, the group that's deploying this is asking for anywhere from like $500,000 all the way to like $10 million in some instances as a ransom to unlock your files. Um, and uh, this group, apparently, according to Malwarebytes, uh, goes by the name of Evil Corp, which is an interesting reference to uh, Mr. Robot, uh, one of my all-time favorite, uh, you know, hacking shows. Um, and uh, they kind of point out a few interesting things about um, Evil Corp. Uh, apparently, Evil Corp used to use other malware previously, like Drydex and uh, BitPamer uh, ransomware. Uh, but for some reason, they have now switched to Wasted Locker. And um, every victim that they attack, it appears that they build a custom version of this ransomware for that victim. Um, another unique thing, which you don't see it all the time, but apparently um, they take like a hands-on approach when they're deploying this ransomware, where they'll actually propagate within the network and they'll try to go after like backup systems so they can break or disable the backups before encrypting everything and then asking for the ransomware, uh, which is outside of what ransomware normally does. It seems like uh, these guys have found a way to, uh, you know, go just a little bit more to uh, probably ask for the higher ransoms um, uh, that they've been asking for reportedly. Um, now, with malware, like Wasted Locker, you, you know me, I love learning more about malware, and I'm always curious, how do they get named? Um, and this one in particular got named uh, because of the file extension that it appends uh, to the end of the files that it encrypts. So it'll take, like, the victim name, and it'll take the word wasted and combine them, and that'll be the extension of the uh, encrypted file. So I'm just always curious, you know, how this stuff gets named, and apparently um, this is how um, uh, this one got its uh, its name. Um, one interesting thing, again, about um, ransomware in general or about malware in general is, like, how does it spread? How does it get on your network? And according to Malwarebytes, uh, they've been seeing this ransomware spread through um, malicious uh, advertisements uh, on, the, on various websites. Um, and the advertisement might tell you, like, there's something wrong with your computer, maybe your memory, you're running out of memory, or something like that. And it'll ask you to download something. And once you download that, apparently that could be the gateway to eventually getting this, um, this malware in your, in your network or on your computer. Um, so it's very interesting because I kind of was hoping these kind of drive-bys would be done by now, like, you know, brow there's a lot being done in browser security. You can, like, turn off notifications and do all kinds of things. So you kind of hope that people or users wouldn't be fooled by things like this. But apparently, you know, this is still uh, fairly active out there. So uh, I thought this was interesting because it's a little bit different than usual. Um, so I don't know what you think. What do you guys think? Yeah, so um, actually I had a – I thought, and you brought, you you touched on it a little here, Stan, where you said that um, you know this unlike typical ransomware that gets picked up usually by a phishing email or you know some other method of transport. This is actually picked up by a drive-by or a compromised website, which is fairly unique for ransomware. Um, and digging a little into the article, I noticed it's a it's a highly targeted uh, 
ransomware as well, right? And I guess that's where the whole high five hundred thousand to million dollar ransom notes come in, um, which makes me think that if it's kind of targeted, and they are targeting specific compromised websites, then maybe they know what websites your company typically goes to, which is a little frightening because that could also mean they're in there already. Maybe they've begun some form of infiltration. Maybe they're they've breached the network some way. Um, so this gives the IR teams some crazy, you know, new place to look now. Like, hey, this is not just a one-off lucky shot that they got. Maybe somebody's in here. Maybe somebody's been taking notes and seeing where we're going um, and talk specifically compromising websites that we normally go to. Um, I think that's pretty unique. Yeah, the, the infiltration is definitely like a scary component of it. You know, the propagation, like how do they discover that where your backup servers are so they can disable them. That means mm -hmm. they probably do study the environment and make, you know, quick decisions about where to go. And it's, it definitely shows technical proficiency and probably, I guess when they put such high ransoms, it's almost like they're valuing their work effort of all that they right. had to do at such a high cost. Um, sure. And I guess it make it really hard for victims to deny paying the ransom because their backups might be disabled or, or working incorrectly or the backup system might have been disabled. So I have a thought about um, if, they, if they put such a high uh, amount uh, for the ransom, um, are they not concerned that they would be tracked, that the threat actors would be tracked, the cyber attribution of it all? Or, um, you know, what, what do you think about that? You know what, that's a really good question. You, you, you would think that in the criminal underworld, you would want to kind of stay hidden and asking for so much money, it does seem like it would be like a giveaway, like where's all this money going? One interesting thing, I wonder if, because I think the payments are in Bitcoin, I wonder if because it's in Bitcoin, there's a sense of anonymity, like it, it wouldn't be discovered. Um, and perhaps that's part of it, um, which is, you know, we won't be found because we're using Bitcoin. Um, and then I wonder who could even pay such high ransoms. Um, I mean, even for small businesses, medium-sized businesses, I mean, like large, any business, 500,000 even is, is a lot of money. It's a, it's a good point to bring up because I do know that there are researchers out there that monitor the blockchain um, and they look for specific wallets that these known attackers are using because they tend to keep a couple around and they keep an eye on those wallets to see if there are any large transactions going through or just in general. Um, so yeah, there, there's that chance that they won't get caught right away, but they're building a case. Maybe, right? I mean, there's always that chance, yeah. I hope that, the, you know, through that kind of research, these kinds of groups could be identified, and hopefully that could be, because usually, at least I heard this a lot in movies, follow the money. And I, yes, I guess following the money <laughs> ultimately leads to, you know, finding the people who are behind this. Um, yep. So um, preventing, like, all this, you know, ransomware from um, taking effect. So really, I mean, I thought this was an interesting story and a, a lot of interesting pieces to it uh, as to how the malware propagates and uh, the kinds of really high ransom.